path tracing in Dragon's Dogma 2? No, your eyes are not fooling you, as that is what you are seeing right on screen right now in the PC version of the game. Path trace lighting, shadows, reflections, all running in real time as enabled by a mod for that PC version. How does that path tracing work and perform? Well, you'll find out today in the course of this video. But first, some practical things. How do you mod the game to enable path tracing? First, go to GitHub and grab the most recent RE Framework version for Dragon's Dogma 2. Extract that with the Direct Input 8 DLL into the DD2 directory. And then copy and paste the Lua script from Excellence Mod on Nexus Mods into the Auto Run folder of RE Framework in that DD2 directory. Then go in game and you should have access to a bunch of additional options at the bottom of RE Framework related to ray tracing and of course, path tracing. How does the path tracing from this mod look? Let's show off some comparisons here to get a sense of how it is functioning. Take a look at these two images here. On the left, the game's default graphics with its RTGI on, and on the right we have path tracing as enabled with the mod. As you can see, the path tracing adds a lot more material and lighting detail into the game, even above and beyond the standard RTGI. You get all of this smaller lighting detail, like the skylight coming in through the window here. The materials and textures also show off more detail. Look at the richness of the door in the frame here on the right versus the left. Or how about those rocks there, pitted and craggy in that skylight on the right, while the left is kind of dark and dull looking. We're getting a lot better materials here with path tracing on. How come? Well, as we can see in this image as well, Path tracing is done on a per pixel level of granularity, or in this case, subpixel. Four samples per pixel, giving a lot more lighting detail to the surface texture and geometry. The standard RTGI on the left has a lot less samples per pixel. In this game's case, it's about one for every four pixels that is then upscaled in a rudimentary way. So you can imagine that leaves out a lot less detail. Another reason why the path tracing on the right looks so much better is because it includes specular light paths or reflections. Take a look at this shot here of this armor on the stand. Dragon's Dogma 2's standard graphics with RTGI do not have a competent ray traced reflection part. As a result, the armor on the left looks kind of weird, splotchy, and it doesn't look particularly like metal, I would say. It's also kind of glowing oddly in comparison to its surroundings. On the right, with path tracing, the metal just looks the part, and it showcases real-time reflections and self-occlusion. I think it just looks a lot better. This added in proper reflectivity greatly enhances the game's materials and textures versus the standard RTGI presentation. Like we can see here with this detritus on the ground, the objects in the left kind of have an overly darkened and dull color to them, as if there's some sort of strange ambient occlusion being applied to them. On the right with path tracing, you get a real sense of the directionality of that light, and all the materials of those different objects on the ground look very different from one another. The glass bottle is much more reflective than the wood or stone, and the metal has a dull sheen in its own right. The right almost looks like a photo, I would say, while the left looks suitably in video game territory. Materials are not the only thing that get healthy improvements. Shadows do as well. In DD2, ray tracing is only used for diffuse global illumination, so direct shadows like we see here on the church-like structure are done with shadow maps, and they'll have those typical shadow map issues of lacking resolution. So a lot of the smaller details that are not picking up shadows are kind of disappearing. On the right with path tracing, shadows are ray traced, so they have a lot of great contrast and they'll show off smaller bits of geometric detail that is otherwise missed without ray tracing. Detail is not the only enhancement. Since shadows are now done per pixel, instead of being projected on a grid like rasterization, there's no more fizzle and popping and jittering as shadows move when the time of day changes. So shadows no longer look like they're gonna break at their seams here. On top of this, there are just more shadows in general with path tracing on. Many lights in DD2, like we see with these candles on the left, don't cast shadows to save performance. With path tracing, all these shadows are cast, so we get a lot more scene detail here. So this mod, which turns on path tracing in Dragon's Dogma 2, seriously ups the visuals in many areas, leading to better materials, shadows, and lighting. So where's the catch? How is it that I can just have a mod here which adds path tracing to a fully featured AAA game? Isn't that kind of ridiculous? 
Well, for the keen-eyed among you, you may already know the answer here. And we can see how this mod is doing this by looking at this shot right here. Notice here when I zoom into any scene detail, you can see there's a kind of film grain of sorts that is visible everywhere. A grain that is constantly moving on any of the small detail. That is noise from the path tracing which is not being denoised. Yes, the mod here is enabling path tracing without denoising. As we can see in this debug overlay from RE Framework while using the excellent mod, you can turn on path tracing if you turn it from ASVGF to pure path tracing. ASVGF is a type of denoising filter used for things like global illumination. And if you turn it to pure path tracing, well, it's foregoing the denoiser. The reason for this, I think, is because the path tracer found hidden in Dragon's Dogma 2 is a hidden setting for graphics reference work. See, for many modern game engines, it's become increasingly common for graphics programmers to implement path tracing into the game engine to check lighting and material quality against while developing the real-time graphics engine on the side. Basically, they'll have a ground truth of sorts with path tracing to compare their real-time graphics against. Sometimes these path tracers have denoising, like we see in Unreal Engine 5 here. Sometimes they don't. And in Dragon's Dogma 2's case here, there's just no denoising. So this path tracer here in DD2 appears to be a hidden away programmer tool. That means it's not fully functional for gameplay purposes, visually or otherwise. It lacks a denoiser like I just said, so it'll have issues with grain and breakup. It'll also have other issues. Check this out here. These objects on the ground here lack shadows completely with the path tracer on while they have shadow maps with the standard graphics on the left. The reason for this is because these objects here are not being ray traced against in the GI for the original version of the game, so the path tracer just inherits that behavior. A game that is shipping path tracing like Cyberpunk 2077 for example wouldn't allow such large objects to just not be traced against. Another issue with the path tracer is due to its randomness. With big outdoor lights like the sun or sky, the path tracer produces much superior results to the game's RTGI system. It shoots a lot of rays and it, a lot of them are going to hit the sky or areas touched by the sun, so you're going to get some great results. I think that's obvious enough with the side-by-sides, but indoors this randomness of the path tracing can fall apart. Check out the scene here where on the right the path tracer is overly dark in the scene versus RTGI on the left. The reason for this is probably because the path tracer is randomly sampling lights and the environment environment around it, and the chance of a ray hitting tiny lights even with 4 samples per pixel is pretty low. As a result, it's not going to bounce light around the scene as it probably should, something the RTGI does a lot better on the left I would argue. We can see this more obviously at night, where if we look at darker areas near torches at night, we can see a lot of random noise of orange and yellow bounce light there. These are fireflies, something path tracers try and avoid for shipping games. Path tracers that are shipped for games like Cyberpunk 2077 or Alan Wake 2, for example, have more explicit ways to sample lights that is less random, so there's a lot less noise. Another issue with the path tracer is performance, of course. Now, this shouldn't be too surprising to too many people out there, but turning on path tracing here has a pretty significant cost. In this scene here, fully GPU limited, the RTX 4090 at 4K DLSS performance mode with standard graphics achieves 105 FPS, and it only loses around 11% of its total performance when turning on path tracing. But that is pretty noisy, path tracing with just one sample per pixel. To have it look better like the settings I used in this video, I turn it up to 4 samples per pixel with 2 bounces, which drops the frame rate extremely to just a bit above 40 FPS here. If you want to add more bounces, which admittedly have a limited visual effect, then you're having the frame rate again down to 20 FPS. So yeah, this is pretty expensive. While I find this mod from excellent incredibly cool here, it is limited in its practical usage due to performance and the fact that it lacks a denoiser at the moment. Even with that in mind though, I think this mod is giving us an incredible look at the game. For one, it is showing us just how much better the game could look potentially with a real-time path tracing mode if Capcom were to ship one. 
the materials, textures, reflections, and more could look generationally better than the standard presentation if Capcom chose to fix this up with denoising and more explicit light sampling, like that which we see in titles such as Cyberpunk or Alan Wake. And on a smaller level, even if Capcom did not do that, and I doubt they will, this modded path tracer does go to show us how much better the game could look if they added ray trace shadows. Seriously, RT shadows would do wonders here, as the basic shadow maps kind of look bad. But who knows what the future holds here. Modders have done incredible things with RE framework games in the past, and maybe there's room to add denoising in here via modding or fix up other aspects. If there's one thing I've learned while playing PC games for the last 30 years, it's really that you shouldn't ever underestimate people with passion in the community. They can do a lot of magic. But that is really all I have to say about this mod here in Dragon's Dogma 2. I recommend you try it out if you can. If you did like this video, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're already subscribed, ring that little bell in the corner to get instant notifications about when we post our videos. Support us on Patreon, write a comment below, follow on Twitter, and as always, this is Alex bringing you farewell and auf Wiedersehen.